Hi there, Chris here, another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are going to continue our look at painting Lotan from the Ideneth Deepkin faction. And as you can see here, we are uh, nearing the end of this model as we're starting to work on the details. And in this video, we are going to work on the weapons that the octopus is holding, being the knife and the little uh, spiky mace that he's got. Get us started, we're going to use Warp Lock Bronze. Basically, we're just going to slap this onto the palette, grab a little bit, and begin applying a nice, even base coat to the area. Now, I like using Warp Lock Bronze as it is a fast way of getting a kind of a rusty metallic base onto a surface. So oftentimes I will use this color just because uh, it, it looks good underneath the silvers and such because, again, it has those deep uh, reddish brown tones to it. And so that's why I'm using it here. And of course, you know, what kind of weapons these are, who knows what they are. Next is Sotek Green, and this is going to be for the patina on the bronze. Now, not necessarily that these are bronze weapons, but because, you know, I mean, maybe they're underwater or whatever the equivalent is in Age of Sigmar. There's all sorts of corrosion on the weapons. And I figured that, um, you know, given that uh, these are uh, the octopus's weapons that, um, you know, he's probably picked them up from off the ground and, you know, they're... Uh, they're just found weapons, and so they're not going to be in pristine order, as uh, I don't really think he uh, uh, takes care of the weapons. I don't know. Does an octopus take care of weapons? Next is Nilic Oxide, and this is going to be applied fairly sparingly. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to just apply this uh, just in like a little round the nuts and bolts, uh, around the spikes and such, and just kind of randomly place it on the flat surfaces of the mace uh, just to get a little bit of texture going and just a little bit of visual interest. We'll do that for the uh, mace as well as the knife. I concentrate a little bit more on the back side of the blade as, uh, as opposed to the front side of the blade, where I imagine maybe there's a little bit less uh, rusting and corrosion as, you know, he's using it to cut things, right? Stormhost Silver is next, and we're going to slap a little bit onto our palette, and we are going to use a small dry brush, and very lightly, we are going to dry brush the um, metallic bits. Now, of course, when we're dry brushing, we're making sure that we've taken off a large amount of the paint from the bristles, and we are maintaining a very light hand as we work the br bristles across the surface. Here you can see I'm concentrating quite a bit on the top edge of the blade, but I'm also going along the spine here and as long and along the cutting edge, again just to give me that nice um, look of a blade. But once you have them together, that's it. It's as easy as that. Well, I hope you found that quick tip useful and informative. You can watch another quick tip today on miniwargaming.com's vault. Just click on the link in the video description below to watch it right now. If you're not already a vault member, you can sign up for a free seven day trial. Be sure to sign up for the silver membership and that will give you instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in our vault. And again, thank you for watching, commenting and subscribing and happy wargaming.